During the criminal trial process, the burden of proof refers to the Crown's obligation to prove the guilt of the accused beyond a reasonable doubt. It is not up to the accused to prove innocence. After a jury has been selected, here are the steps of a criminal trial. After the jury is selected, the judge explains to the jury their role as the trier of facts. The jury then selects a foreperson who will represent them and communicate with the judge, as well as lead the jury through deliberations and read the verdict at the end of the trial. The Crown's opening statement begins every trial, as the Crown has the burden of proof. It identifies the offence committed, summarizes the evidence against the accused, and outlines how the Crown will present its case. The Crown examines the witnesses. The first examination of a witness is called direct examination, where each witness is asked to tell what he or she observed about the crime. The defense then cross-examines the witness to test the accuracy of the evidence or to convince the jury that there are contradictions to the witness's testimony. The motion for dismissal occurs after the Crown finishes calling witnesses. This is a request by the defense counsel that the judge dismiss the charges against the defendant because the Crown failed to prove its case beyond a reasonable doubt. If the judge agrees, it would be result in a directed verdict, a decision by the judge to withdraw the case from the jury and enter a verdict of not guilty. If not, the trial continues. The defense now presents its opening statements. It summarizes its case. The defense examines the witnesses and may choose to call witnesses to refute the testimony provided by the Crown's witnesses or to show a reasonable doubt. Procedure of direct examination by the defense and cross-examination by the Crown is repeated. The accused may choose to testify on his or her own behalf, but cannot be compelled to do so. After the defense has presented its evidence, the Crown has the opportunity to rebut or contradict any new evidence the defense has introduced. The defense can now reply to the opposing side's rebuttal. The Crown closes first if the defense has not called witnesses. Defense closes first if it has called witnesses. The Crown shows why the defendant is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. The defense tries to show that the Crown has not established the actus reus and mens rea, showing that a reasonable doubt exists. It is it is intended to help the jury better understand the issues of the case, not to present new evidence. After the closing arguments, the judge gives a charge to the jury. The judge's explanation to the jurors of how the law applies to the case before them. He advises the jurors on how to consider the evidence and how to return a verdict in accordance with the law. He must be very careful as the charge is often the basis for an appeal. The judge's role is to decide on matters of law and the jury must decide on matters of fact. For example, the judge decides what evidence is admissible. The jury decides on what evidence is believable. After the charge has been given, the sheriff escorts the jurors to the jury room to deliberate or reach a decision. If they believe the accused, or they don't know who to believe, they must acquit. If they are left with reasonable doubt regarding the defendant's guilt, they must also acquit. The verdict must be unanimous. Once reached, the verdict is read in open court. Both the Crown and the defense have the right to ask that the jury be polled, or stand individually to confirm their agreement with the verdict. A jury that cannot reach a verdict is called a hung jury. In this case, the jury is discharged and a new jury is selected to try the case again. During a trial, the Crown or the defense may object to questions asked or the answers provided by witnesses. When an objection is made, the judge rules on whether the evidence in question is admissible or accepted by the court. Here are some common ground rules for objections. Is it a leading question? 
a question that suggests to a witness that there is a particular answer. Such a question is not allowed during direct examination. During cross-examination, it is allowed only if it pertained to the previous testimony. Hearsay statements. Evidence given by witnesses based on information received from someone else, rather than personal knowledge. This is inadmissible in court. Opinion statements. A witness cannot be asked their opinion on something unless they are an expert in the field. Immaterial or irrelevant questions. A question that has no bearing on the case. And non-responsive answers. When a witness doesn't answer the question given and has to be directed to do so by the judge.